I love G-Shock watches. And one of the first watches I ever purchased in the G-Shock range was the GAB2100, a later release of the GA2100s, which we're going to talk about today. Now, this particular watch was something that was explained in a number of YouTube videos as one of the watches you want in your beginner watch collection. And it was alongside things such as Tissot, Hamilton, Timex, and others. So I kind of thought to myself that maybe that watch wouldn't be such a bad one to get started on. I kind of like the edgy look of it and the design. So I went searching through the shops and nowhere could I go ahead and actually find them until on a flight out of Japan at the duty free section, I found the very last one. And this is it, the GAB 2100 1A1, a very dark and black sort of watch. Uh, this is a enhanced version of the original GA 2100, which we're going to talk about in the video today. While most will say the GA2100 was released in 2019, Shockbase registers an earlier release date with a special edition GA2100 in the form of the Tencent QQ 20th Anniversary Edition back in 2018. That would be this watch right here. Now, regardless of the year difference, or maybe months, most will point to 2019. The GA2100 was an evolution of the design language of both the DW5000 from 1983, which was a digital square, and an AW500 from 1989, an analog and digital combination. This new design language would not be a one-off, but rather the standard moving forward for G-Shocks of this range. In fact, since its release, there have been 57 different releases registered at the Shockbase website for the GA2100. Some standard versions with different colors, and let's face it, nothing from G-Shock is totally standard, and others by collaboration lines, like the Huff, that would be this watch here, and Huff is a skateboarding company, or another one is Hote. Hote is a legendary Japanese guitarist. Suffice to say, a lot of people have been behind the scenes and working with Casio and G-Shock to create their own watches. In addition to those collaborations, there's also been some interesting color type designs as well. You've got the Lovers Collection, you've got the Digital Glitch, which is this one here, and you can kind of get the idea of it being a screen that's kind of glitching out, or if you're really groovy, the throwback to the 90s watch, which incorporates shocking pink and purples. There was also another series that sported the number of a GA2110. And while I looked at every dimension of this series to try and find out what the difference was between the GA2100 and the GA2110, I found that there could be no difference. The sizes, everything were exactly the same. So if anybody actually can work out what the difference is, I would love to know. But on the surface, it really came down to things like colors and styles, but it still retained the same GA2100 look. Now, sometime around May 2022, Casio introduced the G-Shock GA B2100. And as I said at the beginning of this video, this was a significant upgrade in terms of capabilities of the watch itself. This version incorporated tough solar, so we weren't reliant on batteries, and it also brought into the watch Bluetooth capabilities as well. So you could pair your watch to your phone and it lets you sync your watch's time to the G-Shock central time. Now, a lot of people will ask, why is the GA2100 so popular? Well, it has pretty nice design. It's got some great features. But there's a particular watch from another watchmaking company, which a lot of people in the community have associated this octagon type shape to. And that's why it's taken on the term the Cassie Oak. So that particular watch is this Royal Oak from Audemars Piguet. Again, another name I am sure I am going and butchering. But that octagon shape is something that a lot of people look at with the GA 2100s. The difference being, this watch will cost around about $150 to $200. This watch, around about 
$50,000. Now it's because of that comparison, many people are starting to strive to look at what can I do to this watch to make it look even better, to make it unique, to maybe be more like me. And sure, you can go online today and get aftermarket parts for a DW5000, for example. You can change the casing, you can change the bracelet. But because of this particular watch's nature, you can really get in there and start to customize not just the bracelet and the case, but really start to customize the hour markers. You're able to start modifying the hands. So the pursuit of, I guess, uniqueness in this particular watch has spawned an entire marketplace. And some of the enthusiasts on that marketplace have actually turned into companies themselves. Now, while a search on a more Western online marketplace like this one will yield some interesting results, I mean, we can see some watch faces and bracelets and things like that. It doesn't naturally emulate the expansiveness of the modding community. If you do the same search on something like AliExpress, you will literally be inundated with choices. And we're not just talking about bracelet replacements. We're talking about our hand makers. We've got luxury diamond case modifications. We've got a whole range of different things that people want to be able to do. Now, of course, I can understand that sometimes the perception of the quality of things coming out of China may not be top notch. But there's a lot of things that come out of China, which you are probably already using today. And I can tell you that looking at AliExpress and trying out some of the modifications they actually have, they're actually pretty legitimate. They work well, they have the nice brand, and they're very, very focused on providing a good experience for their particular customers. However, this can be challenging. And so some companies have actually picked up on that. Now, one company who recognizes that the modding experience can be a little bit overwhelming is XKX Mod. Now, these guys don't just sell you the band or the bracelet. They will go through and sell for you the actual modding kit. The modding kit includes the pieces, the tooling. It actually comes together in a very nice package. And they don't just do Casios, especially when we talk about our uh, GA2100s here, but they'll also do Seikos and Apple Watches. Now, recently, their big modding kit is the Gen 6 Ultra. They've gone through multiple generations. It's interesting. The mod kits themselves, if you have a look, they are actually more expensive than the watches themselves. This is a 259 USD kit for modding, and that's discounted from $300. Considering these watches typically cost around about $120 to $150, $300 for a modding kit is substantial for playing around. But the end result can be quite significant. If I zip down here to the bottom, you can actually see an example of a GAB2100 where they've modded the case and I think also the hour markers by the looks of it using the actual kit itself. It brings a whole different look for the actual watch. So it's fun to be able to go ahead and do, but it can still be, even with the kit, overwhelming. Uh, there is a whole range of tools that you need to be able to use, and you can actually have the tools shipped to you. You really need to disassemble the watch down to its core components to really build it back up. And even SKX Mod itself will say, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, maybe you should go to a watch repair shop who can potentially do this for you. But I kind of think that if you're able to go ahead and actually do it yourself, there is this uh, this huge amount of gratification you get out of rebuilding a watch into something uniquely your own. And sure, it's not a royal oak, but it really becomes what people call that Cassie oak. Now, on top of that, there are even companies that have been created to sell the watches that have been modified already. Take this site, for example, Curious.com. This company will go ahead and sell you watches that they have modified. And to be honest, they actually look pretty cool. I mean, they do more than just Cassie Oaks, but they do Seikos and things like that. But if we focus 
because of the conversation of our video being on the GA 2100s, just looking at what they're producing is pretty impressive. You know, you can see some of these really nice sort of dark greens on blacks, some of these oily colors on gold. I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous. And I guess it helps people to be able to get something that's unique to them that there is nowhere else in the world right now. Now, just as the GA2100 was an evolution of the DW5000 and the AW500, there is a new watch that has recently come out, which some are saying is the next evolution of the GA2100. That watch is the GAB001, a watch which takes the octagon to the next level with some very edgy design language, no tough solar, but it does come with Bluetooth. My favorite in this particular range is this white resin one. Uh, and as the person in the shop who was trying to explain and I guess sell it to me, has some very Stormtrooper-esque vibes to it. And I love it. I think it's a very, very cool watch. I love the dials. I like the little purple highlights to it. If it had tough solar, I would probably be convinced to go ahead and actually buy it. But looking at this watch, I kind of wonder uh, how moddable will this watch be? That's not a no sale for me, just because you can't go ahead and actually mod the watch itself. But Will this be the replacement for the GA2100? Will this be the next foundational platform for modified watches around the world? We'll have to go ahead and actually see. So is the GA2100 the perfect watch? Well, I like it, but it's going to come down to your own personal opinion. Fair warning, there is one thing I really don't like about this, and i probably put this down to the fact that I'm getting old and sometimes I need glasses. But the digital aspect of this watch down in the bottom right hand corner, this negative approach, I find it very, very hard to read. Day or night, I find it difficult. I can try using the light to sort of see. Uh, but again, I think I probably need glasses. It does help a little bit. But Without that light, it's really, really tough to see what's going on in that negative display. And I know that there are some positive display ones, but perhaps that takes away the edginess and the dark appeal of the watch itself. But in summary, I think it's a cool watch. It's got a great look. It's got a great appeal. They've done some very, very interesting things with their collaborations and their colors. Uh, and it's a great platform for obviously not just a modern community, but an entire aftermarket business. And look, I still have one, two, and here's a third one that I tried to modify myself with an aftermarket. Uh, and this also has the positive display. So ladies and gentlemen, I offer to you the GA2100 for your consideration. It's a great starter watch. It's what a lot of people go ahead and actually recognize, and it's a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for stopping by.